Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Again, for another opportunity to learn your word. We thank you, Father, for all that you've spoken to us already this day. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who is on the inside of each one of us, the author of the Bible, and the one that gives us revelation. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you continue to give us revelation right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. You can open your Bible to the third chapter of the book of Revelations. In the book of Revelations, we have a reference to seven churches. And there are many things that we can learn about the local church. And its importance through these seven churches. John was on the Isle of Patmos when he received a vision of the Lord. And through that vision, we have the book of Revelations. Jesus spoke to him about seven churches that were in Asia Minor. That is modern day Turkey today. That is modern day Turkey today. Every one of these churches started with a move of God, started out of or came out of revival. People got born again. They received the word. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. There was a move of God. And all of these churches uh, were established. Later on, when Jesus speaks to John, there were five of them that had gotten out of the flow of God. And Jesus brought correction to them. Jesus spoke to John. John was to speak to the pastors. He wrote these letters to these different pastors. And then the pastors were to give this out to the church. So you have a structure of leadership. Jesus is the head of the church. He gave it to John. John gave it to the pastors. The pastors were to give it out to the church. Five of them needed correction. Two of them were in a good way. Jesus did not bring correction. He complimented them fully. Well, there's a church that I want to focus on in this session. And we've been teaching a little bit about end times. And there are keys that 
we are that we can see with this church that help us to go through these times. Na kuna funguo ambazo tunaziona katika makanisa haya yanayotusaidia sisi kuendelea katika kipindi hiki cha nyakati za mwisho. And this is the church of Philadelphia. Na hili ni kanisa la Philadelphia. So I want you to look with me at the 7th verse of the 3rd chapter of Revelation. Nataka uangalie ufunuo sura ya 3 na mstari wa 7. It says in verse 7 and to the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Anasema mstari wa 7 na kwa malaika wa kanisa lililoko Philadelphia. Go back to the first chapter of Revelation. Turudi sasa kwenye kitabu cha ufunuo sura ya kwanza. And let's look a little bit about this term angel and church. Hebu tuangalie sasa hii habari ya neno malaika na kanisa. First of all, look at verse 11. Tuangalie kwanza sura ya kwanza na msari wa 11. Jesus says, "I am the Alpha and Omega." Which verse? Verse 11 of chapter 1. Chapter, eh, ya kwanza, ya ufunuo, wa moja. Jesus is the one that got the church started. Verse 11, 11. I am the Alpha and Omega. Is this Revelation? Yeah, Revelation chapter 1, verse 11. Hayo ya what is saying to you? I am the Alpha, I'm the beginning and the end. Okay, see you hapa kwangu. Is this verse 8? Um, no, it's verse 11. I, I mean, it does say verse 8 too, but also down in verse 11. Okay. Maybe you don't have it. Yeah, I don't have it. It's Sometimes right. it happens. All right, verse 8, Jesus calls himself the beginning and the end. Okay. And then in verse 11 it talks about these seven churches it says under Ephesus under Smyrna Simirna, under Pergamos Pergamo, under Thyatira Tiatira, under Sardis Sardi, under Philadelphia, Philadelphia and under Laodicea na Laodicea then, if you go down to verse um, 20, it says the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. It says the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Anasema zile nyota saba ni malaika wa yale makanisa saba. So we have seven stars. Kwa hiyo kuna nyota saba. And we have seven churches. Na kuna makanisa saba. Now, the word angel there. Sasa neno malaika pale. In the Greek. Katika giriki. Means messengers. Inamanisha. It's not always talking about angels. There are places in the Word of God that it speaks about angels that go out and work for us as we speak the Word. But in this case here, it's talking about pastors. You understand, angels do not need to be corrected. They just hear the word that we speak and they go and do it. But with some of these pastors, they had to be corrected. The head of the local church is the pastor. You are under the headship of Jesus. He's the chief pastor. Yesu ni mchungaji mkuu. Na wewe mchungaji uko chini ya uchungaji wa Yesu. And you are the under pastor under the chief pastor. Na wewe ni mchungaji ulie chini ya mchungaji mkuu. So what happens in your church you're responsible for. Kwa hiyo kile kinachotokea kanisani kwako wewe kanisa la mahali pamoja wewe unawajibika. 
In fact, the Bible says that we as ministers of the gospel are going to go through a higher judgment. Hata hivyo Biblia inasema sisi ambao ni wachungaji tutapitia hukumu iliyo kuu. We are to be examples. Lazima tuwe mfano vigelelezo. You understand? Unaelewa? And when God gives the message to the local church, he gives the message through the pastor. Na Mungu anapoleta ujumbe kwa kanisa la mahali pamoja, analeta ujumbe kupitia mchungaji. Your responsibility Jukum, is to study. Jukumu lako ni kuendelea kujifunza. To study this word, to know this word well. That's your number one responsibility. Kujifunza kwa undani neno la Mungu, ulijue vizuri neno la Mungu. Hiyo ndio jukumu la kwanza sana kwa wewe mchungaji. And to pray. Na kuomba. To seek the Lord. Kutafuta uso wa Mungu. To get fresh messages from God. Kupata ujumbe ambao ni ni ni, ni ujumbe kutoka kwa Bwana, ujumbe fresh. What do you want to say to this local church today? Kwamba nitasema nini what is the message Ujumbe upi that's going to cause faith to rise in their heart? What is the message that's going to help them during the week? Ujumbe gani utawasaidia kutembea katika wiki yote hii? To go forward and to live the Christian life out in front of the world. Ili waendelee mbele lakini pia waishi maisha ya utakatifu katikati ya watu wa pagani. As a pastor it's your responsibility to give your local church a full counsel of God's word. Kama mchungaji wewe ni wajibu wako kuwapa washirika wako eh, neno kamili la Mungu. That's the number one thing. Hiyo ni jambo la kwanza. So here Kwa hiyo hapa it says the mystery of the seven stars or the seven pastors. Anasema siri ya zile nyota saba au au wachungaji saba and the seven golden candlesticks. Na vile vinara saba vya dhahabu. God calls the local church a golden candlestick. Mungu analiita kanisa la mahali pamoja kinara cha dhahabu. You know how powerful that is? Angalia ilivyo ya muhimu sana na nguvu. The term that is used for gold here, neno linalotumika hapo kwa dhahabu is the highest valued gold. Ni ile dhahabu ambayo ina thamani kubwa sana. It's the purest of gold. Ile dhahabu iliyosafishwa na ikawa safi sana. It's the gold that costs the most money. Ni dhahabu ambayo ikiuzwa inauzwa kwa thamani kubwa sana. And Jesus uses that term for the local church. Na Yesu anatumia hiyo lugha ya dhahabu safi akimaanisha kanisa la mahali pamoja. Do you know what the most important thing is in your city? Hivi unajua nini cha muhimu sana ambacho kipo katika eneo lako? It's not the government building. Sio yale majengo ya wizara or where the government comes together and works. Au mahali ambapo watu wa kiserikali wanakwenda kufanya kazi. It's not a castle. Sio nyumba za 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 waku. A place where a king lives. Pale ambapo wafalme wanaishi. It's not a a shopping place. Sio mahali pa kwenda kufanya biashara. It's not a bank. Sio mahali, sio benki. It's not a place where you buy food. Sio mahali unapoenda kununua chakula. And those things are important. Najua hivyo vyote ni vya muhimu. But the most important thing in every city in every community is the local church. Lakini kitu cha msingi na cha muhimu cha thamani kubwa mahali popote katika eneo mji wote ni kanisa la mahali pamoja There's nothing more important than your local church in your city Hakuna kitu kingine cha thamani kikubwa kama kanisa la mahali pamoja katika mji wenu Jesus calls it a golden candlestick Yesu anaita hilo kanisa kwamba ni kinara cha dhahabu And when the church is doing good in the city the city is going to be doing good Na kanisa linapofanya vizuri katika mji basi huo mji wote utafanya vizuri When the church is doing good in the nation the nation is going to be doing good Kanisa likifanya vizuri katika taifa taifa lote litaenda vizuri This is why there are good things in store for Tanzania because the government has put a respect on the church. Hii ndio maana Tanzania kuna mambo mazuri yanayoendelea kwa sababu rais wa Tanzania ameenda kuliheshimu kanisa. Has recognized the value of the church. Ametambua thamani ya kanisa. The value of the ministers. Thamani ya huduma. And when the government does that, God will see to it that the nation is blessed. Na 
serikali inapofanya hivyo Mungu anaitamka taifa hilo kuwa taifa lililobarikiwa When the church goes down the nation goes down Kanisa likizama chini na taifa lote linazama chini When the church goes up the nation goes up Kanisa likiinuka juu na taifa lote linainuka juu Hallelujah Hallelujah So you need to see your church as the most valuable thing in your whole city Kwa lazima uone kanisa lako la mahali pamoja kama ni kitu cha thamani kubwa zaidi ya vyote katika eneo lako. And who is the church? Kanisa ni nani? It's not a building. Kanisa sio jengo. The building is simply the place where the people are gathered together. Kanisa jengo ni mahali ambapo kanisa linakuja kukutana. But the church is all of the people that God has has given t- to your care. Tunapoongea kanisa tunamaanisha ni wale waumini ambao Mungu amewaleta wewe uwachunge. Hilo ndio kanisa wale watu ndio kanisa. Every one of them. Kila mmoja wao. Jesus calls a golden candlestick. Yesu anawaita kila mmoja wao ni kinara cha dhahabu. And I understand. Ninaelewa. Some of them can be very difficult to work with. Kuna wengine wana mapembe mazito. Some of them you have to be very patient with. In fact it's interesting. Because when Paul wrote his letter to Timothy, who was a pastor, Paul wrote grace and mercy be unto you. Paulo aliandika rehema na neema viwe kwako. That term mercy is for the ministers. Ile ili kwa ajili ya wahuduma wanaofanya huduma. Yaani neno rehema na neema ni kwa ajili yetu wachungaji. And in the Greek it means a special mercy, a special peace, a special care to work with people. Kwa ile Kigiriki inaonyesha ni 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 neema ya kipekee ambayo tunapewa ili tuweze kufanya kazi na hawa washirika ambao ni wengine vichwa maji na mapembe So when you're having a difficult time with people Kwa hiyo unapokutana na mapembe ya ngombe hayo You can call on that mercy Itarema hiyo I've done it many times. Mimi pia anasema pia amekutana na watu kama hao mara nyingi sana. I tell my wife who is a pastor. She huwa, is the pastor. Huwa ninamwambia mke wangu ambaye yeye ndio mchungaji kwenye kanisa lile la langu. She's the pastor of our church back in Germany. Nilimweka mke wangu kuwa mchungaji kwenye kanisa langu pale Ujerumani. We released her into that about three years ago. Kama miaka mitatu iliyopita nilimweka awe mchungaji. And there's times that it's not so easy for her. Lakini <laughs> especially in Germany hasa katika Ujerumani a woman mwanamke and a pastor kuwa mchungaji she's pioneering i'm telling you na kuambia yule ana nguvu ya kuanzisha mambo na kuambia when she goes through difficult things i tell her say remember there's a special mercy anapitia mambo mazito sana najua kuna neema ambayo ni maalumu kwa ajili yake i've been a pastor too for many years mimi nimekuwa mchungaji kwa miaka mingi sana but god moved me into a different place sasa hivi nasimamia mambo ya utume hallelujah hallelujah all right sawa so it says kwa hiyo inasema the seven stars are the pastors of the seven churches. Hiyo nyota saba hizo ndio wachungaji wa yale makanisa saba. And the seven candlesticks. Na vile vinara saba vya dhahabu. Well, there's gold there that means it's precious. Okay, hivyo vinara saba kuna dhahabu hapo ambayo inaonyesha ni thamani sana. It also represents the Holy Spirit. Lakini pia ina inazungumzia kuhusu Roho Mtakatifu. Because to be in the church kwa sababu kuwa kanisani which is also the body of Christ. Ambao pia ni mwili wa Kristo the family of god familia ya mungu you must be born again lazima uwe umeokoka when people are not born again they may go to church but that doesn't mean they're a part of the church wale ambao hawajaokoka hata kama wanakuja kanisani hao sio kanisa the church only consists of born again people those are the only ones that are in the family of god kanisa ni wale tu ambao wameokoka na hao ndio wanaitwa kanisa na ndio mwili wa Kristo. And when we are born again, tunapookoka, God's Holy Spirit comes in us. Roho mtakatifu 
wa Mungu anakuja kuishi ndani yetu. That's the oil. Hasa hayo ni mafuta. That was in this candlestick. Ambayo imo ndani ya hivyo vinara. And that's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Na huo ni moto wa Roho Mtakatifu. The local church needs to be full of born again people and people that are on fire with the Holy Ghost. Kanisa ro, kanisa la mahali pamoja lazima lijawe na watu waliookoka na hao watu wawe na moto wa Roho Mtakatifu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gold Zahabu represents the righteousness. Ina simama badala ya wenye haki. They're not a bunch of sinners. Hakuna watu wenye dhambi. When they're born again, they are the righteousness of God in Christ. Watu, Hallelujah. Wanapookoka wanakuwa wenye haki wa Mungu. So we want Jesus sight on the church. We want to have Jesus view on our local church. Kwa lazima tuwe na ule mtazamo wa Yesu katika kanisa la mahali pamoja and what's amazing here na kinachoshangaza hapa is some of these churches needed major correction ni baadhi ya makanisa haya saba katika haya kuna makanisa yalihitaji kukemewa kwa nguvu sana but they were still born again and Jesus still called them a golden candlestick lakini, that is amazing ndio walikuwa wameokoka lakini pia waliitwa kinara cha dhahabu lakini pia walihitajika wa sahihi Now, let's look at verse 7 of chapter 3. Turudi kwenye sura ya 3. So we understand this. It says, and to the pastor of the church in Philadelphia. Na sasa anasema, na kwa wachungaji wa kanisa lililoko na kwa mchungaji wa kanisa lililoko Philadelphia. These things saith he that is holy. Andika haya ndio asemayo yeye aliye mtakatifu. Well who is that? Huyo mtakatifu ni nani? Jesus is speaking here. Ni Yesu anayeongea hapa. He that is true. Yeye ndiye kweli. Jesus is the word that became flesh. Yesu ni neno lililofanyika mwili. All truth comes back to the word of God. Mwili uliofanyika neno Did you know that's the way it is with science? That's the way it is with math. That's the way it is with with business. Everything must come back to the word of God. Kila kitu kama ni science kama ni nini lazima kirudi kwenye neno la Mungu. The Bible is the best science book. Kitabu cha Biblia ni kitabu bora kabisa cha sayansi. The Bible is full of mathematics. Kitabu cha Biblia kimejaa hesabu. Oh, the Bible is full. Na kwa truth. Biblia imejaa ukweli. And if what people believe cannot be founded from the word of God, it's not truth. Na kile watu wanachokiamini na kukifanya kama hakipatikani kwenye neno la Mungu Biblia, hicho kitu si cha kweli kabisa. So you understand your church is to be the foundation of truth in your city. Kwa hiyo lazima uelewe, kanisa lako lazima liwe ndio msingi wa ukweli katika eneo lako unalolikotoka. If the government school system tries to teach your kids something different, ni kweli kama mashule ya kiserikali au mashule ya watu binafsi yanajaribu kufundisha vitu tofauti which is what they do all the time in germany right now ambacho ndicho hata huko ulaya ujerumani wanafundisha vitu vya kishetani kabisa and your kids are in church na kuna watoto wamo kanisani kwako and they can go back to the word of god and they say they can say no that's not so this is what the bible says wafundishe ili waelewe ili wakiwa shuleni waseme hapana hiyo sio kweli biblia inasema hivi You understand? Unaelewa? They can even answer their test this way. This is the way you taught it in class. It's, this is what you believe, but this is what I believe. Wawape changamoto wa walimu wao. Waambie sawa, najua hicho ndicho unaamini wewe, lakini sisi tumeokoka. Tunaamini hivi Biblia inavyosema. You understand? Je, unaelewa? Jesus is the foundation of holiness. Yesu ndio msingi wa utakatifu. As Christians we have God's nature in us. Kama watu wa Kristo tuna asili ya kimungu ndani yetu. And that nature wants to live a holy life all the time. Na hiyo asili ya kimungu inataka kuishi maisha matakatifu kila siku. And as the people find out who they are in Christ the nature of God in them flows out. Na watu wanapojitambua sisi ni akina nani katika Kristo ile asili ya kimungu ndani inatokeza na kuchanua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the foundation of everything. Yesu ndio msingi wa kila kitu. He's the way. Yeye ni njia. 
He's the truth. Yeye ni kweli. And he's the life. Na ni uzima. You go through Jesus all the ways that you go. Jesus is the way. Hallelujah. Kila kitu unachokifanya lazima upitie kupitia Yesu. Maana ndio njia. Hallelujah. All that you believe is 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 truth. Jesus is the foundation of truth. Kila unachokiamini ni kweli kwa sababu Yesu ndio msingi wa ukweli. And the only way you have real life is through Jesus. He's the life. Njia pekee ya kuwa na maisha halisi ni kupitia Yesu kwa sababu yeye ni uzima, ni maisha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It says, Anasema, He that is true, yeye aliye kweli, he now, now look at this. Angalia hapa sasa. He that hath the key to David. Aliye na ufunguo wa Daudi. Or the key of David. Yeye mwenye ufunguo wa Daudi. He that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Yeye mwenye kufungua wala hapana afungaye naye afunga wala hapana afunguaye. I know thy works. Najua matendo yako. Behold I have set before thee an open door. Tazama nimekupa mlango uliofunguliwa mbele yako. Everybody say thank God for the open door. Kila mmoja sema asante kwa mlango ulio wazi. Hallelujah. I have set before you an open door. Nimekuwekea mlango uliofunguliwa. And no man shutteth. Na hakuna awezaye kuufunga. It says, anasema, and no and I'm sorry. It says, I'm he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. Anasema mlango umefunguliwa, mimi ninayefungua na hakuna anaweza kufunga na nikifunga hakuna aweza kufungua I know thy works anasema najua matendo yako Behold I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it Nadhamu nimekupa mlango uliofunguliwa mbele yako ambao hapana awezaye kuufunga For thou hast a little strength kwa kuwa unazo nguvu kidogo and has kept look at this angalia hapa angalia hapa nawe my word nawe umelitunza neno langu and has not denied my name na wala hukulikana jina langu behold i will make them of the synagogue of satan which say they are jews tazama nakupa walio wa sinagogi la shetani wasemao kwamba ni wayahudi and are not now seal But do lie behold I will make them that come and worship before thy feet to know that I have loved thee. But wasema lakini wanasema uongo tazama nimewafanya waje kusujudu mbele ya miguu yako na kujua ya kuwa nimekupenda. Now look at verse 10. Angalia mstari wa 10. Behold thou hast kept the word of my patience. Kwa kuwa umelishika neno la subira yangu. And I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Nami nitakulinda utoke katika saa ya kujaribiwa. The hour of test. Muda wa kujaribiwa. The hour of trial in the earth. Muda wa majaribu duniani. How many of you want your church to walk through the times with victory? Ni wangapi wanapenda kutembea kanisa liende kwa wakati wa ushindi tu? There's a key here. Kuna ufunguo hapa. I'm not going to tell you that in the world it's going to get better. Sitakwambia kwamba mambo yatakuwa mazuri kabisa. But in the church, lakini sitakwambia kwamba kule duniani mambo yatakuwa mabaya. There's a way for it to go through. Lakini nakwambia kanisani, look at your neighbor and say you're going through. Ya kutufanya tuende kuvumilia na kupitia hayo na kuyavumilia. Tell your neighbor your church is going through. Angalia mwambie jirani mwambie kanisa lako litapitia na kuendelea. With this church we have the key to going through the difficult time in the earth. Katika ufunguo katika kanisa tuna ufunguo wa kupitia katika magumu na kuyavumilia na kusonga mbele. It says Anasema I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world. Anasema nita nitakulinda utoke katika saa ya kujaribiwa iliyo tayari kuujulia ulimwengu wote and to try them that dwelleth upon the earth kuwajaribu wakao juu ya nchi behold i come quickly naja upesi hello behold i come quickly jamani naja upesi anasema bwana 
this was not only for that church then. This is for us today. This is a prophetic verse for us today. Hallelujah. I showed you that we are living in the time of Jesus' return. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Him that overcome will I make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So how many of you have ears? It doesn't say to just the church of Philadelphia. This is for us. This is for all local churches. Now, we right now are hearing about a world crisis. Kila mtu anasikia kuhusu mabala ya, na majanga yalioko duniani. How many of you know that in the world right now there is something that has come kuna kitu kimekuja that, that, has, that is affecting every single nation in the earth. Ambacho kina gusa na kuharibu kila taifa hapa duniani. It would be like a trial in the earth, a crisis in the earth. And the entire world knows about it because of the media. And the media is putting it out, putting it out all over the world. Fear, 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 fear. You understand the ruling spirit that's in the world is the spirit of fear. But that's not the ruling spirit of the church. We are people of faith. And why do we have faith? Because we know the word of God. We believe the word of God. We are taught the word of God. And our churches are not full of fear. They're full of faith because our people know the word of God. You understand? Now, let's go back and look at the beginning of what we just read. It says, verse 7, Unto the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things, he that is holy and true and he that hath the key of David. The key of David represents the kingdom. The kingdom. Everybody say the kingdom. During this time that John received this revelation, the king had a room where he would put all of his treasures. And if you wanted to go into that room where the treasures were, 
kwamba uingie kwenye chumba cha thamani vitu vyake vya thamani you had to get in contact with the key man lazima ungekuwa na uhusiano na yule anayetunza ufunguo have you ever seen a key man you ever seen those men that have those big rolls of keys hanging out of their pocket? You see that sometimes at the hotel. They're carrying all these keys with them. Or maybe in a government building. And in order to go into rooms, you have to contact that person to get into the room. That key man can open every room in the building. Well, when John wrote this, the king had a specific person that was called the key man. Kwa hiyo wakati ambapo imeandikwa hii na mfalme alikuwa na mtu maalumu ambaye ndio anabeba na kushikilia funguo. And if you use that key na ungetumia ufunguo huo through the key man kupitia mbeba funguo wa mfalme you could open up the doors and go into the place where the treasures were. Ungeweza kupenya na kufungua chumba ambacho ndio kuna vitu vya thamani vya mfalme. Do you realize Je, that God has given you as pastors Mungu wewe mchungaji, the ability to show people how to get into the treasures? Wewe mchungaji, ufunguo, washirika, cha vitu vya vya Mungu. You see, we are blessed. Unajua, si we are not getting blessed. Sio kwamba, the Bible says that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And where is the heavenly place for the believer? Where is the heavenly place for the believer, for the Christian? Okay, you know what the Bible says? It says in Luke 17:21 that God's kingdom is in us. So every born again believer has a deposit of treasure in them. The healing is there. The way to put your hand to something and prosper is there. The favor of God is there. The way for them to have promotions at their job place is there. Love is there, joy is there, peace is It's all there. Kila kitu kimejazwa kwenye ile box ndani yako. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Well, how do you get that inside out? Through, through the key man. Something to unlock something inside. There was a day that I believed that God put sickness on me to teach me something. Mungu anaweka magonjwa ndani yangu ili anishikishe adabu wakati fulani. And so I was sick all the time. Kwa kila mara nikawa tu naumwa umwa tu. But then I saw by his stripes you were healed. Nikaona andiko kwa kupigwa kwake mmepona. I said, "Whoa!" Nikasema, "Oh, oh. My days of sickness are over. Masiku yangu ya kuumwa yameisha." It became revelation. Hiyo kawa ufunuo. The key is the revelation. Ufunguo ni ufunuo pia. 
Once you get a revelation from God's word, you just unlock the door for the treasure to flow. Ukipata ufunguo kutoka kwa eneo la Mungu, inakupa nguvu ya kufungua tu na kuipenya kwenye baraka zako. Let's go to Matthew 13. To the book of Matthew. Twende kwenye kitabu cha Mathayo. That's mine. Excuse me. It's mine. Ah. I wondered why it was blurry. <laughs> My Bible looked real strange. <laughs> All right. How many of you know the scripture? Matayo 13. That says whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I'm sorry, Mark, Matthew 16. Ah, kumbe ni Matayo 16. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven Chochote mtakachofunga duniani kimefungwa na mbinguni Chochote mtakachokifungua duniani kimefunguliwa na mbinguni How many of you know that verse? Wangapi wanajua andiko hilo? All right Ephesians 1:3 says that you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in the Old Testament the heavenly place was the holiest of holies heavenly place This was the place where the power was, where the word was, where the ark of the covenant was. In the center of the tabernacle in the Old Testament. Ah, pale ambapo ni patakatifu pa patakatifu ndio palikuwa vile vifaa vyote vya utakatifu. That was the place that the priest could go to one time a year. Na kuhani aliweza kuipaingia hapo mara moja tu katika mwaka mzima. But that was the source. That, that was, that's how God lived among the people. Na hiyo ilikuwa ni mfano na udhihirisho vile Mungu aliishi katikati ya watu. But in the New Testament, lakini katika agano jipya, when you get born again, you become the temple. Unapookoka wewe ndio unakuwa hekalu. Your spirit is loaded with all the treasure of God. Kwa hiyo ndani ya roho yako pana zile hazina zote kama zilizokuwa patakatifu patakatifu lile sanduku la agano. Vyote vinakaa ndani yako. And all of the people in your church, they're loaded. Na wote waumini wako wa shirika katika kanisa lako wote wamejazwa na hazina. When they are born again, wanapokuwa wameokolewa, God is in them. Mungu anaingia ndani yao anaishi. And it's your responsibility as a pastor to come along and unlock the door. Sasa wewe ndio uliyepewa jukumu la mafunguo, kwa hiyo kazi yako ni kufungua wanapata baraka zao, fungua wanapata neema zao. To help them to see who they are in Christ. Ili waweze kujiona na kujitambua wao ni akina nani katika Kristo. Yani wabarikiwa. And this comes through the key man. Na hiyo ni lazima tu anayehusika ni mbeba funguo ambaye ndio wewe mchungaji. Look at this. Angalia hii. Verse 17. Look. Of Matthew 16. Matayo 16 na mstari wa 17. Jesus answered and said unto them Yesu akajibu akawaambia I'm sorry let's go to verse 13 I don't want to get too far ahead Tuanze kwanza mstari wa 13 When, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples saying whom do men say that I the son of man am Basi Yesu akaenda pande za Kaisaria Filipi akawauliza wanafunzi wake akisema watu hunena mwana wa Adamu kuwa ni nani So the question was Swali lilikuwa Who do the people say I am? Does anybody know who I am? Hivi kuna mtu anajua mimi ni nani? Eti watu wanasema wanasemaje kuhusu mimi? Mimi ni nani? What did they say? Walijibuje. It says Wakajibu And they said some say thou art John the Baptist. Wakasema wengine unena huyo Yohana mbatizaji. Some Elias. Wengine wanasema Elia. Others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Wengine wanasema wewe ni Yeremia. Na, au mmoja wao wa manabii Who do you say Jesus is? Wewe unasema Yesu ni nani? That was a question. Isikawa swali tena hilo. You see, what you believe about Jesus makes all the difference in your life. Unajua kila unachoamini kwamba Yesu ni nani katika maisha yako ndicho kinachomaanisha katika maisha yako yote. The Muslims, they don't see him as the son of God. 
The Muslims, they don't see him as the son of God. They only see him as a great prophet. Eh, waislamu wenyewe hawaoni kwamba ni mwana wa Mungu. Wao wanachojua tu ni nabii mkubwa. And they sure don't understand the crucifixion. Na ndio maana hawaelewi hata swala la 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 kusulubiwa. I've had some very interesting discussions with some of them. Mimi huwa nafanya majadiliano na wao baadhi yao kwa kweli kuna tunakuwa na kipindi And this is why they are not born again. They are not in the family of God. You have to go through Jesus. Na kwa sababu wamekosa ufunuo kuhusu Yesu kwa ni mwana wa Mungu ndio maana hawawezi kuokoka maana kuokovu lazima upitie mwana wa Mungu. And you have to believe beyond Jesus being just a prophet. Na lazima mawazo yako yawe zaidi ya kuwaza kwamba Yesu ni nabii tu. You understand? Unaelewa? So in verse 15, kwa hiyo katika mstari wa 15, he said, "Okay, that's what other people say. Who do you say I am?" Akasema sawa, hiyo ni mengi wengi wanasema, "Sasa nyinyi je, ambao ndio wanafunzi wangu? Nyinyi mnasema mimi ni nani?" And Simon Peter, na Simoni Petro, answered and said thou art the christ hallelujah thou art the christ wewe ni kristo the word christ here means anointed it's not his last name that's not what that means thou art thou art anointed wewe ni kristo thou art the christ wewe ni Kristo. Now look at this. Angalia hii. The son mwana of the living God. Wa Mungu aliye hai. Wow. Wow. Peter. Petro. Peter. Petro. You got it. Umeipata. This is one time Peter answered with a awesome answer. Hii ni mara moja mara moja kati ya majibu ambayo Petro alijibu vizuri kabisa kwa ufasaha. <laughs> He got a little bit of a preview of what it's going to be like to be a Christian. Alipata mfunuo kidogo wa mtazamo kidogo wa vile inavyotakiwa kuwa wa mtu akiwa mkristo. And how a born again Christian is going to live. Na vile ambavyo mtu aliyeokoka ataishi. What did Jesus say to Peter? Na Yesu akasema Petro Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou Simon Bar Jonah. Yesu akamjibu akamwambia, Heri wewe, umebarikiwa wewe Simon Bar Yona. Blessed, umebarikiwa. Blessed, Heri. Do you know what bless to bless means? Unajua kubariki kubariki inamaanisha nini? It means to bring forth good in every part of your life inamaanisha kusababisha mazuri yatokee katika maisha yako yote Where's the blessing? Kuna baraka. It's in you. Isimo ndani yako. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wewe ni hekalu la Roho Mtakatifu. So in you is the ability to bless every part of your life. Ko katika wewe kuna uwezo wa kubariki kila sehemu ya maisha yako. What would happen? If your entire church learned how to bless every part of their life. Kama kanisa lako lote kila mshirika haya mabaraka yote yatokeze kwa maisha yao wote. What would happen? Nini kitatokea? If your church you didn't even have to pray for, for for most of the people anymore in the area of health because they're all walking in divine health. Nini kitatokea? Kama washirika watatambua ile hazina ya uponyaji iliyo ndani yao hata hauna haja kukaa unawaombea waombea kwamba ni wagonjwa ni wagonjwa baraka za uzima ziwatokee wote kila mmoja awe mzima. Their marriages were heaven on earth. Their marriages were were heaven in the earth. Hata mdoa zitakaa salama duniani. They're putting their hand to something and they keep prospering and prospering and prospering. Kila watakachogusa kinafanikiwa, kinabarikiwa, kinafanikiwa. They're not fighting, they're walking in the love of God. Tatembea, utakuta wanatembea katika upendo wa Mungu. The world is full of fear, but they just keep going forward in faith. Angalia ulimwengu umejawa na hofu lakini sisi hapa tunaendelea na imani. And the blessing of God continues to flow flow flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
This is what Jesus said. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Peter Petro, with the revelation ule, of who I am nani, the blessing will flow who I am Mimi nani. Peter Petro, with the revelation ufunuo, of who I am nani. because remember kumoko, and you learned this in Bible school First John 4:17 says as he is so are we in this world. You were recreated inside to be like Jesus. Wewe uliumbwa lakini ndani yako uliumbwa kabisa uwe kama Yesu. Think about it. Hebu fikiria. Everywhere Jesus went the blessing flowed. Kila mahali Yesu alienda baraka zilimwagika. Peter had his best business day ever the first time he came in contact with Jesus. Na siku Petro alifanya biashara ya ajabu sana ya kuvua samaki kuliko siku zake za maisha yake yote. Everywhere Jesus went there was a blessing in him to flow out. To change his life, to change his family's life and to change all the people around. How do we come to that point? Somebody tell me how much time that I have left. I, I... Yamani, time keeper, tafadhali, uwe makini. Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Okay, thank you. All right, look at this. Angalia. For flesh and blood hath not revealed, everybody say revealed, revelation. Angalia, anasema, mwili na nyama havija kufunulia. Angalia, hapu manake ni mafunuo. It's not information, it's revelation. You understand? You want the word of God to come alive. When, pe- when the word of God comes alive in the heart of a person, it's revelation. It's aha. I got it. I see it. And faith comes. You see, faith is always in the spirit of a believer. Always. It's not something for you and I that comes from the outside in. It's already in us. The Bible says you have the God kind of faith. You have the same spirit of faith in you. We all got the same faith. Hallelujah. So what happens? Along comes the word of God. It goes through these ears. Faith has ears. It catches that faith that's in that spirit. And it says, I see it. We walk by faith and not by sight. I see it. Revelation means you see it. You see it. And then it comes up and it renews your mind. The doubt leaves and the faith comes in. And you start thinking the way God thinks about life, about situations. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what happens? You start living like God in the earth. You start living like a son of God in the earth. 
wanaishi kama Yesu alivyoishi hapa duniani Your church starts living like God in the earth. Kanisa unalolichunga inaanza kufumuka kwa baraka neema kama vile Yesu alivyoishi duniani. Everywhere they go, blessing, 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 blessing. Kila mahali washirika wanapoenda, baraka, 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 baraka. They come to church, they got all kinds of testimonies, blessing, 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 blessing. Wa, wanakuja kanisani, wana shuhuda nyingi za mabaraka alivyomwagika katika maisha yao. The Bible says out of our belly flows rivers of water. Biblia nasema kutoka katika tumbo zetu panachipuka chemchemi za maji ya uzima. So Jesus said. Yesu akasema. Blessed art thou Simon Barjona for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee. Umebarikiwa wewe Simon Bariona kwa sababu haya mambo si kingine kilichokufunulia. But my father which is in heaven lakini ni baba yangu aliye mbinguni. Now read the next verse. Ukisoma andiko nalofuata. Jesus said, Yesu anasema, Thou art Peter, wewe ni Petro, and upon this rock, na katika mwamba huu, I will build my church. Nitalijenga kanisa langu. I will build my church. Nitalijenga kanisa langu. I will build my church. Nitalijenga kanisa langu. We're talking about being a church full of victory in a world that's full of crisis. Nana nakwambia kwamba kanisa duniani litakaa na majanga na mashida. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're talking about being a church full of victory in a world that is full of crisis. Tunaongea habari ya kuwa na kanisa lilojaa ushindi katikati ya dunia iliyooza na kuwa na majanga ya kila aina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what we tell our church all the time. Europe is really crazy right now. But every time we get in that pulpit, we say no plague comes near our dwelling. No. We speak and, and say that no plague comes near okay. our dwelling. Anasema kia tunapoenda kwenye madhabahu zetu, tunatamka ya kwamba hakuna mabala yatakayotokeza katika makanisa yetu God brings us forth with silver and gold and there's not one feeble person what one sick person among our tribe Bwana anatupa neema ya ajabu na hakuna wagonjwa watakaopatikana katika makanisa yetu and they're all prospering na watu wanafanikiwa and none of them have been sick hallelujah na hakuna mgonjwa katika tiki somebody shout piga kelele useme amen Hallelujah. 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 Jesus said, Yes, sema. Thou art Peter. Wewe ni Petro. In the Greek, katika Giriki, it's the word Petros which means little rock. Ah, katika Giriki ni neno kama lilivyosema Petros maana yake ni kajiwe kadogo. Peter's name means a little rock. Neno Petro linamaanisha kajiwe kadogo. And upon this rock, na kwa jiwe hilo, anybody know who the big rock is? Na unajua sasa hilo jiwe lingine kubwa ni lipi? Jesus. Yes, the rock. Ni jiwe lile likubwa sasa. It's the word Petra which means like a rock that you build a big city skyscraper upon. Come again. It's it's the big foundation rock. Lile lijue lingine ambalo ndio Yesu nilijue likubwa la msingi. When they put this beautiful building up, walipoanza ile jengo ili kulijenga, they spent a lot of time in the foundation. Yaani muda mrefu mwingi walianza kwanza kuchimba chini na kushughulikia msingi tu. Everything that you see here that's beautiful with your eyes can stand and remain strong because it has a strong foundation. Unaviona kwa sababu msingi umeshughulikiwa kwa uhakika huko chini. So Jesus said to Peter that had the revelation of who he is. Kwa hiyo akamwambia Yesu akamwambia Petro ambaye alipata ufunuo wa kwamba Yesu ni nani? Thou art the Christ the son. Kwamba Yesu ni mwana wa Mungu of the living god mwana wa mungu well, when you get born again you become a son of god unajua wewe ukiokoka pale pale unakuwa mwana wa mungu and when you get the baptism of the holy spirit you got the anointing you got the power hallelujah baptizwa na roho mtakatifu unakuwa mpako wa mafuta unakuwa na upako hallelujah unakuwa na nguvu so you find out who you are in christ and who he is in you 
na lazima ufahamu wewe ni nani katika Kristo na ni nani aliyemo ndani yako na wewe ni church who they are in Christ and who he is in them fundisha kanisa lako wao ni nani ndani ya Kristo na ni nani aliyemo ndani yao and it says upon this rock I will build my church hallelujah na akasema kwa mwamba huu kwa jiwe hili kwa mwamba huu nitalijenga kanisa langu and the gates of hell na, shall not prevail mi, na milango ya kuzimu come on haitalishinda ha the gates of hell mi, ma, malango ya kuzimu will not prevail haitalishinda they will not be able to destroy your church haitaliangamiza kanisa come on church Kanisa, you build your church number one on the rock of the revelation of who Jesus is. Jenga kanisa lako katika msingi wa ufunuo wa kwamba Yesu ni nani. And look at the rest of the verse. Angalia. It says in verse 19. Kwenye mstari wa 19. Woo, here it is. And unto thee I give the keys. Anasema pia nimekupa ufunguo. It's the revelation of the word that you teach and preach that unlocks the blessing. Ni yale mafunuo na mafundisho unayoyafundisha ndio yanakuwa na ifunguo zinafungua mambo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they go forward in victory. Naendelea katika ushindi. Whatever they bind is bound in heaven. All of heaven is behind what they do. Kila wanachokifunga kimefungwa na mambo yote yako nyuma. Hallelujah. What they lose, we want to lose the blessing of God in the earth. Kile kina tunachofungua na baraka za Mungu za kuwa zimefunguliwa katika maisha yetu. It will be loosed. Vinafunguliwa. This is the victory. Huo ndio ushindi. It's building the church on the revelation of who we are in Christ. Inajengwa katika msingi wa kujua sisi ni akina nani katika Kristo. Never forget this. Usisahau hiyo. The heart of the revelation of who we are in Christ is found in the epistles. Kuile mfunuo wa kujua sisi ni akina nani katika Kristo inapatikana katika maandiko nyaraka Teach your church the word of God if that's the most important thing you can do Fundisha kanisa lako neno la Mungu hicho ndio kitu cha msingi unachoweza kufanya Paul called it the mystery Paulo akaita siri that was hidden zilizofichwa but it's for the church ambazo ni kwa ajili ya kanisa And this is the victory Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Baba tunakushukuru. Thank you. Asante. For wonderful pastors, wonderful churches. Kwa wachungaji wazuri na makanisa yao mazuri. And for strong churches. Makanisa ya nguvu. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen.